الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله It is a must that we deeply reflect and we deeply ponder over our situation and that we look and we reflect on the reality and that we don't get caught up in the here and now but we keep our perspective appropriate so as to prepare for our forever the great imam al alama imam uthaymin rahmatullah alayh he says amma ba'd ayyuha an nas o human beings and bi idnillahi ta'ala i want us to deeply contemplate and to listen with an attentive ear to what the imam he says he says اتقوا الله تعالى فير الله فير الله the most high واخشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن والده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا he said and fear a day fear a day where a father or a parent a father or a mother a parent will not be able to avail their children in anything nor will the children be able to avail their parents in anything a day where the parents will be incapable of helping the children and the children will be incapable of helping the parents fear this day ibadullah o slaves of allah i'lamu anna hadhihi al-hayat ad-dunya دار ممر والعبور know that this world have knowledge know with the certainty that the life of this world it is something that is passing this is an abode that is temporary it is passing by this is a place of transit this is a place of transit and i want us all to really contemplate on that that this abode is transit yani ubur it is like if you are on the the subway and we know that there are stops on the subway you're in transit you're not planning to stay there forever the subway is not your final destination it's just a place of transit you're in transit an individual with aql an individual with a sound intellect he doesn't get caught up in the subway he doesn't put his roots down and cast his anchor inside of the subway and say i'm going to stay here in the subway forever i'm going to stay here and live the rest of my life here in the subway no he uses the subway for what it's worth he uses it for its purpose and that is to bring him from this point to that point but he doesn't get caught up in the subway you don't find anyone trying to live all their life inside the subway everything about the subway no he gets on the subway he goes from point a to point b and then he gets out from the subway and he goes to his final destination this is how we should be looking at the life of this world it is something that is transit it is not something that we should be getting caught up in it is something that even if we hold on to it is something that is fleeting is going away wadarul amal this is the abode of action this is the abode of action wa kahn lil ibad and this is the abode of kadh the abode of hard work the abode of hard labor this is the time where we supposed to be putting forward that work that work for the akhirah this is the time where the slaves of allah they gain good for themselves or they will destroy themselves 
فَلَا تَغُرَنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا So don't allow the life of this world to dazzle you. Don't allow the life of this world to delude you. وَلَا يَغُرَنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغُرُورِ And do not allow the deceiver to deceive you. Do not allow that deceiver. Do not allow that deceiver, the shaytan, to deceive you about Allah. عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَا عِبَادُ اللَّهِ فَتَذَكَّرُوا Contemplate. I want us all to contemplate right now. Think. Remember. مَا أَنْتُمْ إِلَيْهِ صَائِرُونَ من الموت وما بعده يوم تحشرون. Contemplate and reflect and think, ponder over that which you're going toward. Contemplate over that which you're going toward from death and that which is after it, from the day that we will be resurrected. Contemplate because this is the direction that we are going in. All of us, we are moving towards death. All of us, we are moving towards death. And there are from amongst us those who have a lot more years behind them than they have in front of them. So let us contemplate about this, that we are moving towards death. Remember this fact. تَذَكَّرُوا حَالَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ حُلُولِ الْأَجَالِ Think about what is going to be your situation. Let us contemplate what is going to be our situation when our lifespans have come to an end. What is going to be our situation when we have breathed our last breath, when our heart has beat for the last time. Let us contemplate that situation. And contemplate over that day where we will depart from the lands, we will depart from our, from the families, we will depart from our relatives, from our kith and from our kin, that day that we will leave everybody who is still here on this earth. Those relatives, those loved ones who are still living, when it's our time for death, we shall depart from them, we shall leave them. Let us contemplate on that day because that occurrence it is coming. It is coming. Just as we are here right now, there will come a day where we won't be here. Just as we are on top of the earth right now, there will come a day that we will be beneath the earth in our graves. This is the reality. To that Kerul, think about this. Contemplate. Hinama. تَشَاهَدُونَ الْآخِرَةِ أَمَامَكُمْ Think about when we're in that instant, when we have left the life of this world, when we are now witnessing the hereafter in front of us. Think about that because there's going to come a time where we are witnessing the hereafter. That's it. There's a barzakh. Not going back to this world. There's no going back. There's no reverse. There's going to be a barrier. That prevents us from going back to this world, the life of this dunya. Now we will be in that grave. We can't go backwards. There's no going back. There's no do-overs. So contemplate when we are in that stage where we're now seeing the life, the next life, it's in front of us. وَأَنْتُمْ مُقْبِلُونَ إِلَيْهَا Mudabiruna and dunya and we are going toward it, leaving the dunya. The time where we're going toward the akhirah, leaving the dunya, the dunya is over. Our stay in the dunya is over. This will happen to all of us. So no. No, with assurity. So that keruhina nas ila qismain. Think about the time where the human beings they will be split into two different categories. Two different categories. At the time of death, human beings, there will be two different categories, two different times, two different experiences. There will be those who the angels, when they come to take their souls at the time of death, there will be individuals who will be good. 
there will be individuals who will be righteous. There will be individuals who the angels will say unto them, Salamun alaykum. Allah Ta'ala, He says, تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ أَلَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم نزلا من غفور الرحيم Allah Ta'ala says what translated means and they will descend unto them angels saying unto them let's think about what situation we want to be in they will descend to them angels at their times of death, and the angels will say unto them, Don't be scared, nor be sad, and have glad tidings of the Jannah in which you were promised. Have glad tidings of that Jannah in which you were promised. We were your awliya, we were your friends, we were your companions in the life of this world, and we will be your companions and friends in the hereafter. You shall have inside of the Jannah whatever your souls desire. You shall have inside of the Jannah whatever you want. And you shall have in it whatever you request. And entertainment for you from the most, from the all forgiving, the most merciful. And entertainment for you from the all forgiving, the most merciful. Contemplate, Ya Ibad. When we die, do we want to hear this? Is this a situation that we want to be in when we die? That the angels are giving us glad tidings, telling us, don't be scared, don't be sad. Glad tidings for you for the Jannah. On our way to that abode, where we will have therein anything we desire, anything that we ask for, we will have it inside of the Jannah. Is this where we want to be? Or do we want to be from the other type? The other type. The Imam he says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ تَبَفَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسَهُمْ They are from them, those who the angels take their souls while they are oppressing themselves. While they are oppressing themselves with their disbelief, while they are oppressing themselves with their sin and their transgression, so on and so forth. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ and if you were able to see the oppressors, if you were to able to see the wrongdoers, the kuffar, when they are in the agonies of death, when they are in the agonies of death, when malaika, basiqoo aydihim, akhriju anfusakum, and the angels they are extending their hands, saying unto them, bring your soul out. Telling the soul, come out. Because the soul of the kafir, because it knows, it knows what it, what's, gonna, what's in store for it. From punishment, from chastisement, from pain. It's going to hide inside the body. It's not going to want to come out. So the angels will be telling it, get out. Get out the body. Today you shall be you shall be recompensed with a humiliation, with a humiliating punishment. Today you going to taste a humiliating punishment. Because of what you used to say about Allah, because of what you used to say about Allah that wasn't true, because of the lies you used to say about Allah Now you are going to pay for it. وَكُنْتُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِهِ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ And you used to arrogantly, you used to disrespectfully reject the ayat of Allah. You used to turn away from His ayat. You turned away from His book. You turned away from His reminder. You turned away from the Qur'an disrespectfully, arrogantly. You thought you didn't need nothing. Heart, you were haughty. Now it's time to pay for it. Now it's time to pay because of what you did. Now it's time to reap what you have sown. Now it's time to pay. Yeah, Ibadullah. 
Let us live our life contemplating our death. Let us live our life in preparation for our death. Because when the angels come to take our souls, our situation is either going to be this or it's going to be that. So now what do we want to do? Everybody with his mouth, he'll say, well, I want to be from those who are successful. But is that what our actions say? I'm saying this to myself first and foremost. And then to whoever my voice it may reach, we have to get our acts together. We have to get our acts together. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَالنَّازِعَاتِ غَرْقَى وَالنَّاشِطَاتِ نَشْطَى He says, and by the angels, by the angels who violently rip and snatch out the soul of the disbelievers. Listen to that description. There are angels who they come and they will violently snatch and rip the soul of the disbelievers out of their bodies. And by those angels who gently take out the souls of the believers. When the soul comes out of the body, these are your two options. Either it will be ripped out, snatched out violently, or it will be taken out gently. Those who have their soul taken out gently, these are the true believers. These are the believers. Those who have their souls ripped and snatched out of their bodies, these are the kuffar. So we have to now prepare for this because the soul is coming out the body. We have to live our lives in accordance to the manner in which we want the soul to come out the body. Hada aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li jami'i al-muslimin fa astaghfiru fa innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Bismillah walhamdulillah Salatu wa salam ala rasulillah Wa ba'd Ya ibadullah Contemplate and let us get ready and prepare For the next life The poet he said La daru lil mar'i ba'd al mawt Yaskunuha Illa allati kana qabla al mawt بنيها فإن بناها بخير طاب مسكنه وإن بناها بشر خاب بانيها. He said that there is no abode in the hereafter to live in for an individual except for the one that he built it before his death. Except the one that he built before his death. فَإِنْ بَانَاهَا بِخَيْرٍ طَابَ مَسْكَنَهُ And if he built it with good, then he will have a good abode. And if he built it with evil, خَابَ بَانِيهَا Then he would have corrupted and destroyed his abode. So we have to prepare for right now. And contemplate. The Imam, he says, تَذَكَّرُوا إِذَا حُمِلْتُمْ عَلَىٰ رِقَابِ إِلَى الْقُبُورِ He said, and think about that time where you'll be carried. You'll be carried to your graves. You'll be carried in, in, on, on a slab or inside of your coffins and the like to the grave. Think about that time when we're being carried to our grave. Contemplate. All of us are going to experience that. Our body is going to the grave. When furatum biha al ahl wal awlad wal amwal wal qusur, and we will be alone, separated from our families, separated from our children, separated from our money, separated from our castles. Jaleesukum al-a'mal That thing that's going to stay with you And your actions All of this money 
all of these possessions, all of these gadgets, all of the homes, all of the families, all of the wives, all of the children, all of that will remain behind. It's not going with you. The only thing that will be with you will be your deeds. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا مات ابن آدم when the son of Adam he dies انقطع عمله his deeds are severed his deeds stop when the son of Adam he dies his deeds they, they stop they come to an end إلا من ثلاث except for three three type of deeds they keep going صدقة جارية الصدقة that is continuous like those individuals who they aid in building of the masajid that masjid will be there with Allah after the person's death as long as the people they are benefiting from that masjid then they're going to continue to benefit continue to get good deeds he builds a well for example as long as people are drinking from that well he will continue to get good deeds so on and so forth this is a sadaqah that is jariya this is a sadaqah that continues, meaning after a person's death. Or ilmin yuntazarubi, or some knowledge that they left behind that people are still benefiting from. Some knowledge that they left behind and that people are still benefiting from, whether that be in the form of writings and so on and so forth. Naam, lectures, recordings, whatever the case may be. People still benefiting from that person's end, from some knowledge that they left behind, as long as the people are benefiting from such, then they will continue to benefit and get good deeds, even after their death. Awaladun, salihun, yad'u lahu, or because they have righteous children, that make dua for them. They have righteous children, that make dua for them. Let us think about this, because how many of the fathers neglect their children because they run around chasing after work? Whereas one of the greatest investments they have is their children. Because that work, that paycheck, it only lasts until when? So you spend it. You get paid today, you pay all your bills, you pay this, you pay that, you buy gas, you buy whatever. And then once that's gone, then that's it. So all them hours you done put in for that check is gone. So it don't even last yeah, that long. Don't even last that long. But your children, the investment of your children, when they're righteous and they make dua for you, then this goes beyond the grave. So this is this is an investment that we can't afford to, to let go. Hadith Sahih, Rawahu Muslim. Ya ibadullah, we have to prepare for this. We have to prepare for that day. Yomul Qiyamah, where? We'll be by ourselves. We'll be by ourselves. The only thing we'll be carrying with us is our deeds. فَإِمَّا خَيْرٌ تَسُرُّونَ إِلَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ If our deeds are good, We'll be happy until the day of judgment. And on the day of judgment, we'll be happy. وَإِمَّا شَرٌ تَجِدُونَ بِهِ حَصْرَةٌ وَالنَّدَامَةٌ But if they are evil, then we will be regretful. We will be regretful of what we have done, sad what we have done. Think about it. Let us all think about our deeds. Let us think about what we do day in and day out. Is it that which we're going to be happy with? يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ That we'll be happy that is يعني with us inside the grave, or is it going to be deeds that, or yani, that we are regretful over? Deeds that we wish weren't with us, weren't by us. Let us contemplate on that, because this is the time where we're doing deeds. So, what kind of deeds do we want to take with us? What kind of deeds do we want to take with us to the akhirah? Because none of this stuff is coming with us. None of this materialistic stuff is coming with us. For the men, these women ain't coming with us. For the women, these men, they're not coming with you. Our children aren't coming with us. Our money isn't coming with us. None of that stuff is coming with us. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَ He said, you have come to us alone. You have come to us alone, meaning you have no money, you have no wealth, ain't no friends around you. You come to us alone كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٌ just like we created you the first time. وَتَرَقْتُمْ مَا مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِكُمْ And everything that we have benefited you with, everything that we have bestowed upon you, is left behind you. You don't got it. 
Everything that we bestowed upon you is left behind you. You don't have it. It's gone. You have to remember, Ya Ibad, the likes of this day. And prepare for it. The reality of this day that Allah Ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ The day that a man, he will run away from his brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And he will run away from his mother, run away from his father. وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ And they will run away from their spouse. And they will run away from their children. Everybody will see each other and then split. They run away. Why? لِكُلِ امْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِي Because every one of them on that day will have that which preoccupies him. That which keeps his mind busy. That which makes him worried. He's worried. He ain't got time for you right now. He's worried. Everybody worried about themselves. Don't got time for nobody else. Because they worried about themselves. Nefsi, nefsi. Myself, myself. Got time to worry about you. I'm worried and concerned. Am I going to go to Jannah or not? I'm scared of, do I have to go to the fire? I don't got time to worry about you and what's going to benefit you. Nefsi, nefsi, myself, myself. This is the reality, ya ibad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has named Yawmul Qiyamah. And this is Yawm al taghabun Go back, inshallah ta'ala. Read this surah. Surah Taghabun. Do you know what is the meaning of Taghabun? It is called Yawm al taghabun Yawm al taghabun Why? لِأَنَّهُ هُوَ الَّذِي فِيهِ الْغَبْنُ الْغَبْنُ الْعَظِيمُ Because this is the day that there will be in it great loss or great benefit. This is the day that there will be inside of it either great loss or great benefit. And this is why Allah Ta'ala has named it the day of great loss or the day of great benefit. This is the reality. Yomul Qiyamah, we will either be of the great winners or we will be from the great losers. So what is the determining factor for whether we win or we lose? Whether What is the determining factor of whether we gain or whether we lose? That will be dependent on how we spent these little bit of years on the earth. And when you look and you contemplate on our time on top of the earth, you will find it is nothing but a few decades. We don't even live a century. Most people don't even live a century. And the few that live past a century, so what? What is it as compared to forever? An individual can live for a thousand years, a million years, a billion years, a trillion years. So what? What is that as relates to forever? How does that equate to forever? So what we realize is that no matter how long we live inside this earth, it's nothing in comparison to what is after this. So now you multiply that with the reality that we only live here for a few decades. Some of us 60, some of us 70, some of us go beyond that. Some of us die way before that. 40 something years, that's it, you're gone. 50 years, that's it, you're gone. And then what, forever? 20 years, you're gone, then what, forever? 80 years, you're gone, then what, forever? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Whatever pleasures of this world and so on and so forth, it's not worth it. 80 years worth of pleasure to equate to forever punishment. To come down on Muqiyam and be of the great losers. Why? Because you want to get yours off for 80 years, 50 years, 90 years, 75 years, 45 years. Wow. What an idiot. What a fool would choose that. But to take that little bit of time and to work hard and to work hard for that little bit of time and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you for forever in Jannah this is from Allah's mercy that we only live a few decades that's from Allah's mercy a few decades so no matter what you're going through 
La bats from difficulty. No problem. Why? It's gonna be over soon anyway. So so what? Be strong, hold on. You're gonna be it's gonna be over anyway. And it's from Allah's mercy. A person is patient for a few decades and then for forever he gets Jannah. He can have whatever he wants inside the Jannah. Whatever he asks for in the Jannah is his. She can have whatever she wants inside the Jannah. Whatever she asks for is hers. She can come now Yom Al Qiyamah. He can come now Yom Al Qiyamah as a great winner. Because he what? Because he put in a few decades of hard work. Because he put in a few decades of hard work. And how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because even if we have wasted half of our life away being foolish. Half of our life away in disobedience. If we end out our life in obedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us. If we end our life on obedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us. A person, he becomes righteous right now from today. He might only have a couple months left. He might only have a year left. He might may even have a decade left and he dies. 40 some odd, 50 some odd years of foolishness is erased by what? Those last few years of righteousness. This is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who would capitalize on such a thing as what? One who is extremely intelligent. So prepare. Prepare, ya ibad. Prepare for the day of great gain or the day of great loss. Okay, Muslim.